and that he himself did not use a decidedly social democratic agenda. The best right. measurements of, please, yeah. <laughs> Best measurements of that were two things. The Social Security Act, which he, which he wanted to include national health care. Okay? He wanted to include national health care. The American Medical Association opposed it. And Southern Democrats forever opposed it because they did not want to integrate in any way their hospitals. Okay? And then he signed the Wagner Act. New York Senator Robert Wagner and empowered labor people, labor people and unions were organized and millions of workers who were really seeking representation. And in, the term they used there was industrial democracy. And I'm gonna come back to this in the end when we talk about, when I talk about Bernie, is that okay? Okay. So, you have fine you like permission. Bernie. You do like Bernie, right? I, I wanna get this straight. I love Bernie. Okay, Warren's <laughs> not your woman, right? Warren is well, I can literally and figuratively know. Okay. <laughs> You know, I, look, I, I didn't want to say this. In private conversation, she said some schmuck Jew who looks like an extra on Curb Enthusiasm can't be president. That's what's happening. So anyhow, so, so in 1932, people don't realize... Live show content. He went out to California. <laughs> FDR went out to California, September, October 1932. And he spoke to a group at the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco. And, he, and this is a group of obviously rich people, and he said to them basically that we've made a terrible mistake in American history. We have allowed titans of industry to steal the American promise. And what we need to do is think back to the Declaration, and we need to create an economic declaration of rights. This is, yeah. Woo! which he later translated into something called the Four Freedoms and then an Economic Bill of Rights in 1944. So here's the thing. Rich people at first didn't know what to make of him. But they liked him for one reason. They knew he would end prohibition. Woo! Now, rich people were always drinking. But here's the plan. If you, if you bring about an end to prohibition, that means that working class people will buy beer and pay taxes on the beer, and that means the rich people won't be taxed. Okay? Okay. So he... They, Sounds like they were hoping Bill Clinton was going to get elected. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everybody gets beer. <laughs> you know, I said to something, they are talking backstage, and I said your best voice was Bill Clinton's. Really? Yes. <laughs> I think now it's Chris Matthews. Yeah. Chris Matthews in 1925. I met a guy from the Civil War in 1903, and he wouldn't vote for somebody in a wheelchair. We need to be real about that. He's my imaginary friend. I despise Chris Matthews, by the way. Because like what when does like left wing like media really did turn into the haters ball? <laughs> hey, 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 so, hey, hey, love, love, love too. So in 1933, Lula. <laughs> Lula is libre. There we go. In 1933, in the first hundred days, among the things they enacted was the National Industrial Recovery Act and the Agricultural Adjustment Act. And the National Industrial Recovery Act for the first time created a a strangely low, but nevertheless, a minimum wage and gave workers the right to organize before the Wagner Act, okay? And here's the thing. Capital figured out pretty quickly this was not the guy they wanted. And they organized the American Liberty League. Ooh. Please. It's not good, yeah. folks. <laughs> and Very they, bad. they spent millions on Remember film? No, I'm, I'm only old enough to, you know, don't even know film strips from your school days. I know film strips, okay? They spent millions on film strips, radio advertising, you know, they, they, they spent millions. But they couldn't generate any kind of interest among working people to oppose Roosevelt. So they decided on a different tactic. They were going to get at, go after him using anti-Semitism and racism. 
So here's what they did. So for a start, there was a, they figured they could reach down south and promote their arguments. So they wanted to bring down the Roosevelt administration. So there was a, there was a grassroots campaign, as it was called, that they funded. Okay? Like it's an astroturf. Like, like a tea all the party. Time today. Like a tea party. And to give you the example of what I mean, they, on, they used to have these gatherings, and on every seat in the gathering, and I will not use the N-word, they had a cartoon they would place, and the cartoon said, had Franklin and Eleanor posing in front of the White House in the cartoon, and it said, you kiss the Negroes, I'll kiss the Jews, we'll stay in the White House as long as we choose. And Because they were, they were going to, they, right. Now that wasn't enough. They then also promoted the idea that secretly, the Roosevelts were Jewish. Yeah. Rose. My grandmother believed in this. Right? Point. We were. <laughs> they were a nice Jewish couple. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop a bubble right now. Yeah. Eleanor Roosevelt, before the 1920s, was regularly spouting anti-Semitic and racist things at parties. And in the 1920s, when she got involved in the Women's Trade Union League, her go. life changed. Think about that as you think about expanding this coalition and not doing moralistic clubhouse bullshit. And then she started hanging out with Jewish socialist women organizers. Woo. Whom she brought back to Hyde Park to educate Franklin, who was not Woo! known for anti-Semitic remarks. But anyhow, so they were promoting the idea that Franklin was that Franklin was hiding the fact that he was. What, they just, uh, there was a term for this in, in Spanish countries, something like a, a secret Jew. Okay. Crypto Jew. I'm forgetting the word. Marano. No, there was another word. So, loop, so in the last couple of minutes, so loop it to today, and what we're going to deal with. Yeah. So here's the thing. So what? So anyhow, to Roosevelt's credit, there was a Canadian journalist who interviewed him, I think at the White House, and the Canadian said to him, are you Jewish? Is your family really Jewish? And he said, you know, I don't care if my family was Jewish, Protestant, or Catholic, as long as they were good citizens. Woo! Yeah. So, they, so they, they, they did everything they could to promote anti-Semitism and racism and target the Roosevelt as if they were somehow going to turn this country into some kind of multicultural place. <laughs> okay, that, that, that blacks and Jews and others might actually be the same as white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. And Eleanor became a, cha Eleanor became a champion of women's rights, young people's needs, and she was the one, if she had been president, by the way, more Jews would have been admitted at the outset of World War II. Woo! So hard. But now I want to bring it back. Yeah, yeah. So in a couple minutes, yeah, bring it no, back sorry. to today. No, 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 this is sorry. awesome. I just sorry. wanted okay, to so connect it. I, I, I wasn't teaching as much this week, so I'm taking it out on that. <laughs> <laughs> So, so here's the thing, okay? So we know, we know what capital will do, right? And we've already seen it taking place. I do not watch MSNBC any longer. <laughs> Mimi Roca. He gives me the creeps, right? Okay, and then how about Joanne Reed? Is that her name? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, okay? You know what I'm talking about, right? So this is just the beginning on the supposedly liberal channel, okay? So they're gonna come for us. They're gonna come for us and they're gonna use race, they're gonna use anti-Semitism, they'll couch it in other kinds of words, okay? You know, the, 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 you know that the Republicans, look, Rush Limbaugh, Medal of Freedom? Are you fucking kidding me? I'll give his cancer a Medal of Freedom. <laughs> I'm indulging myself. I'm indulging myself. That was just because of how... Yeah. 
live show. So here's the thing. So, here, so here's the thing. The thing is, the thing is this. Bernie Sanders stands in a long line of radical, progressive, and social democratic politics. And when anybody starts telling you that socialism is un-American, remind them that Thomas Paine, the American Woo! revolutionary, is the father, which I can tell you if you want to send me a note on Twitter, the whole story, is the father of social security. Woo! Abraham Lincoln, in the middle of the Civil War, signed into law the Homestead Act, the Marill Act, does anyone know what the Marill Act is? The Land Grant Act. Every state in the country has a state university because Lincoln signed it into law. Okay. Well, Harvey, just because we do, we're, we're, we're tight because we have to get to the game, but I just want to say, no, this is great, this is exactly it. So, so, just, so just in a minute, how do we have to be ready for this? By anchoring we, what What Bernie's we need doing. to be is solid, we need to be we need to practice solidarity. When Bernie said, when Bernie said, look to your left and look to your right. I remember when I was in college, I looked to your left, look, look to your right, one of the three of you will not be here next year. But, <laughs> but it was, look to your left and look to your right. Are you prepared to do for them what you would do for yourself? Okay. And the answer to that is, you bet your ass I am. Okay? Yeah. Harvey J.P., everybody. I love him. Harvey J.P., the four of freedom. Thank you so much. We learned so much from you. Please read Harvey's books. He'll be back on TMBS soon. Now, we have one more guest, and then we're all going to play a quick game.